Every year, MLB projection systems attempt to do the impossible. Predict which teams will rise, which will fall, and who will win it all. Some use run differentials, others rely on individual player forecasts, and some even blend in machine learning to estimate team success. But can these models really predict the next World Series champion? In this video, we'll break down the most well-known MLB win projection models, explain how they work, where they've gone wrong, and use the 2025 projections to estimate which team has the best shot at taking home the trophy. Let's dive in. Predicting wins in baseball is harder than any other major sport. The season is long, injuries happen, and randomness plays a huge role. But statistical models help teams and analysts make data-driven predictions about team success. Some of the most widely used projection systems include the Pythagorean Win Theorem. It uses run differential to estimate a team's expected win total. Picota, a player-based model that forecasts team performance based on individual projections. Zips, a long-term projection system that accounts for aging curves, player development, and regression. And Steamer, which focuses on recent performance trends to predict the player's next season. Each of these models has strengths, but none are perfect. So how do they work, and how accurate are they? Let's start with the Pythagorean Win Theorem. This is one of the simplest and most reliable methods for predicting a team's record developed by Bill James. It's based on a simple idea. The more runs you score and the fewer you allow, the more games you should win. The formula looks like this. Pretty simple, right? Essentially, it tells us if a team's win total is legit or if they're overachieving. For example, if a team scores 700 runs and allows 600, they might project to win 90 games. But if they win 98 games despite a weak run differential, they're likely due for regression in future seasons. The strengths are that it's simple and effective. It identifies teams that are lucky or unlucky, and it's used in a bunch of different modern models. Its weaknesses, it doesn't account for the team's roster or any changes to it at all, including injuries, and some teams consistently outperform due to elite pitching or defense. The Pythagorean Win Theorem equation is one of the easiest to apply with a decently accurate win projection system, other systems we will talk about in this video, this will be the easiest system to replicate at all other levels of the game, and it's even used to project winners across other sports. Next, we will dive into PICOTA, which stands for Player Empirical Comparison and Optimization Test Algorithm. I know, a mouthful. It is one of the most famous projection models developed by Baseball Prospectus. Instead of using run differentials, Coda focuses on individual player forecasts. It predicts how every player will perform based on their age, past production, and similar players throughout history. These individual projections are then combined to estimate a total team win number. Why it works? It factors in aging curves, meaning your younger stars will get better while veterans begin to decline. It adjusts for park effects, meaning course field hitters won't be overhyped and it identifies underrated teams based on deep rosters. However, like most projection models, where does this one fall short? Well, it's tough to accurately predict injuries. If a star player goes down and misses half the season, that's gonna make a major change to a team's win projections. And occasionally this one underestimates young players who break out unexpectedly. For example, in 2015, Pakota predicted the Royals to win 72 games. They won the World Series that year. But Pakoda is just one example of the advanced player projection models out there. Let's jump over to Fangraphs and take a look at Zips. Zips, created by Dan Saborski, is another player-based projection system, but it takes the long-term approach. It evaluates how players age based on historical comparisons. It predicts which prospects will develop into stars, and it factors in expected regression. Players who overachieved are expected to come back down to earth. Why it's great. It's extremely accurate at predicting player decline. It adjusts for young talent developing over time, and it's one of the best models for long-term team outlooks. Where it struggles, trades and signings can throw off these projections in the long term, and it doesn't factor in team chemistry or coaching like any of these other models. And that leads us to our next point. How accurate are these models? Projection systems get a lot right, but they also miss a lot. We've talked about some of these points already, but some of the things that the projection models we talked about today typically get right are identifying teams that have overachieved or underachieved in previous seasons. 
they help predict player regression and breakout candidates. And they are pretty good at estimating overall team strength based on their roster depth. Things that are hard to project that they may get wrong include injury randomness. No model can predict a superstar missing half of the season. Postseason chaos. Even the best team has only about a 20% chance to win it all. So, once you get to the postseason, it's pretty hard to predict a winner. And finally, the chemistry and coaching aspect. The life behind the game, you know? Analytics struggle to quantify leadership in team culture. So as you can tell, these projection systems aren't perfect. But they do give analysts a general idea of how many games and how likely a team is to make the playoffs each season. When it comes to the application process of these projection systems, or similar ones built internally by teams, this information can be used to aid in player acquisition decisions. If you are a team on the bubble of making the playoffs according to your internal projection models, and you have some room to spend, it may make sense to make a splash signing in the offseason to help bolster your odds of making a run this year. On the flip side, if your models project you to only win 65 games, spending hundreds of millions on a superstar may not give your club the return on investment you need to justify making that decision. So, let's use this information to try and predict the 2025 World Series champion. Using early 2025 projections, we can estimate which teams have the best shot at winning the World Series. According to Fangraphs, at the time of recording this video, the Dodgers have the best chance to win at a 22% clip, followed by the Braves at 14%, the Yankees at 7%, and the Phillies at 5%. If you hop over to Baseball Prospectus and use Pakoda, you will see a slightly different story. The Dodgers are in the lead with a 20% chance, followed by the Chicago Cubs at 9.5%, then the Braves at 9.2%, and the Yankees at 6.1%. The cool thing about this system, it will change over time as we go throughout the season. So make sure to check back on Fangraphs and Baseball Prospectus sites to see who the new favorites may be. While no system is perfect, Combining multiple models gives us the best shot at predicting baseball's next champion. And if you trust the numbers like we do here, the Dodgers will have to be our pick to go back to back in 2025. I know that's the easy way out, but that's what the numbers say. Speaking of advanced analytics, have you checked out PitchLogic? It's a smart baseball that connects to your phone, giving you access to real-time pitching metrics like spin rate, velocity tracking, and release point metrics. If you want to check it out for yourself, use code SIMPLE for $25 off at checkout. Whether you're a player refining your pitches or an analyst breaking down data, Pitch Logic is a game changer. Check out the link at the top of the description to get yours today. Projection models have changed how we evaluate baseball, but they're still just tools, not crystal balls. The truth is, baseball is unpredictable, but by combining data from the Pythagorean Wind Theorem, Pakoda, Zips, and more, we can make smarter, more informed guesses about what might happen. Who will actually win the 2025 World Series? We can't say for sure. But by utilizing the tools we have available to us, we have a much better chance of getting that guess right than we have had in previous years. And hey, if you'd like to support Simple Saber Metrics, check out our merch. You can find it on our website or in the store tab right here on the channel. Every purchase helps us bring you more deep dives into baseball stats and analytics. If you enjoyed this breakdown and you want to learn even more about baseball analytics, check out the videos on screen now. They're handpicked to help you keep diving deeper into the numbers and strategies that make baseball so exciting. I'll see you in the next one.